Okay, so we have this expression here, and it's a fraction, but we have some square roots involved, and I'm telling you that this is wrong, and hopefully you know why it's wrong, but if you don't know why it's wrong, I'm going to explain to you exactly why it's wrong, but more importantly, we're going to talk about how to fix this. So this is definitely something you need to know if you're taking any kind of algebra course. Uh, uh, if you left your answer or your solution like this, your teacher would likely take some points off. So we don't want that to happen. We need to understand how to deal with a situation like this. This is definitely fundamental algebra stuff that we're gonna be talking about. But uh, first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I'm gonna leave a link to my math help program in the description of this video. But uh, basically, I have 100 plus different math courses ranging from pre-algebra to pre-calculus and everything in between. So I really focus on middle school, high school, and basic college level mathematics. Also, if you are taking an exam and it has math on it, so examples would be the SAT, the GED, the ACT, GRE, GMAT, ASVAB, CLEP exam, AccuPlace, or ALEX exam, a teacher certification exam, you get the idea. Uh, people have to take a lot of exams and uh, oftentimes there is a math section I can help you uh, prepare for those uh, exams. If you homeschool, I have a great comprehensive homeschool math curriculum that uh, you might want to check out. And if you need some math notes, you can use my math notes. I'm going to leave uh, links to my math notes in the description of this video. But hopefully you do not need my notes because you should be taking great math notes for yourself. If you're not taking great math notes, you're doing yourself a major disservice in mathematics. Just trust me. Um, I've been teaching math for decades. If you start taking great math notes, everything is going to start looking up for you in terms of your math uh, performance. Okay, so let's get into this problem. So uh, my question to you is, do you know what the problem is and can you fix it? So if you want to go ahead and pause the video and, and kind of use this as a little pop quiz, I think that's a good use of your time. But let's get going and uh, to uh, really kind of set this up, let's take a look at a simpler problem. Okay, so this is wrong as well. Now, why is this wrong? Well, uh, namely, okay, we have this radical. We have well, this square root of 7 happens to be an irrational number. Okay, We're, and you cannot have an, uh, an irrational number in the denominator. Okay, so let's just think about this for a second, and I'll tell you why. If I say... Um, here is uh, uh, eight slices of uh, pizza. Let's see if we can do this real quick. There's four, da, da, da. how many do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so here's our pizza, and uh, there's two of us. And we say, okay, we have this pizza, there's eight slices. Uh, let's divide it by two, okay? So how many slices of pizza do we both get? Well, we would both get four, okay? You get this uh, half and I'll get the other half. So we are happy with that, okay? Now, if I say, well, we got this uh, eight slices of pizza right here, or this pizza has eight slices, and now let's divide it by um, the square root of three, okay? Well, this number, this is an irrational number. It doesn't, it doesn't end, okay? So... Uh, I don't have my calculator in front of me as I'm doing this video, but I think it's like 1.73, whatever it is, right? So it kind of goes 1.73, da, 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 da. It keeps going on and on and on, okay? In other words, this decimal here does not repeat and it doesn't end. So for me to understand, to really get the full value of the square root of 3, I would have to go off to infinity, okay? This is, this is why this is uh, called an irrational number. There's no um, number that we can express this as, as a fraction, okay? So it doesn't make sense. I'm like, okay, divide 8 by a number that doesn't end. Conceptually, that's kind of like we, you know, it doesn't make sense, okay? So in mathematics, we do not want to uh, be dividing by an irrational number. We don't want to have these square roots like square root of 7, et cetera, in the denominator. So we have to fix this up, okay? But that's the reason why? Okay, so if you understand that, then you'll be like, oh, okay, all right, so let's uh, fix this up real quick, and then we'll talk about this more uh, challenging problem here. All right, so what we're going to do is uh, rationalize. So all we're going to do is multiply this thing by 1. So if I multiply anything by 1, what's the answer? Well, it's just, you know, this, right? So if I take this, multiply by 1, I'm going to get 2 over the square root of 7, at least in its the value of that, okay? So I'm not going to break this if I multiply by 1 but I'm going to use a fancy one, okay? Now, what am I talking about that? Well, I'm going to use this one, square root of 7 over square root of 7, because anything 
divided by itself is 1. Okay, so the square root of 7 over, uh, divided by the square root of 7 is in fact 1. So I am multiplying by 1, but this particular form of 1, okay, is really advantageous uh, for me because it's going to address my problem when I multiply across. So when you remember when you've got fractions, we're going to multiply across this way. So the square root of 7 times the square root of 7 is the square root of 49. And then 2 times the square root of 7 is 2 times the square root of 7. Now here, I can take the square root now of that 49. So we'll just use the positive um, version of it. So we'll call that uh, 7. Okay, so that's 2 square root of 7, and I am done. Okay, so basically, this and this, they're equivalent. All right, but this form of uh, this uh, expression, 2 over square root of 7, look, I don't have a square root here. Okay, so this is what you want. This is called rationalizing. So hopefully you understand this, and if you didn't understand this, now you know. Okay, because you have to understand this in order to understand the actual problem that I'm going to do next. All right, so here... When I look at it, I'm like, oh, I have an irrational number down here in the denominator. It doesn't make a difference if I'm adding one to it. If you have any irrational number down here, you're going to have to address it okay, in the denominator. Now, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to multiply by 1, but this time, the one that I have to use is a little bit different. Okay, I'm going to have to use something called the conjugate. Okay, The conjugate. And the conjugate is the following, right? So here... If I have square root of 3 plus 1, all right, if this is plus, I'm going to write this down. What And it's, it's if it's minus, you do the same thing as well. It's going to be the opposite. So whatever this is, just put the opposite sign, okay, over here, and that is what you need to multiply by. So I have the square root of 3 plus 1, so I'm going to have to multiply by the square root of 3 minus 1. If this was the square root of 3 minus 1, I would be multiplying by the square root of 3 plus 1. Okay, this happens... No matter what situation, even if you're dealing with variables, with the conjugate, you're just going to go ahead and use the opposite sign. Okay. And now, probably in future videos, I'll do more um, examples of with the conjugate. But here's the thing: I have to multiply by the square root of three minus one. So I have to, you know, I don't want to break this. It's got to be this thing times one. So it's going to be the square root of three minus one over the square root of three minus one. So technically, you understand, you know that. Uh, you know, we're not breaking the problem. Now, when I teach math, like in this particular video and whatnot, I could just show you real quick how to do this, but, da, 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 da. but I want you to understand this, okay? If you're checking out my uh, videos and on my YouTube channel, or if you take my courses, I try to teach you, you know, mastery. I try to teach you comprehension. I want you to understand why you're doing it, not just simple little directions so you can just follow it, da, 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 da. It's better for your education if you understand why you're doing something, you'll remember it, okay? All right, so let's get into this. So now I have to multiply these two things together and these two things together. And how am I going to do that? Well, you just go ahead and use the FOIL technique, right? So your basic algebra, if you have x plus uh, 2 times uh, x minus 3, you would use FOIL. Now, if you don't know what FOIL is, you need to review that. But that's the first outer inner uh, inner last technique to multiply binomials, and you'll treat this the same way, okay? So let's go ahead and uh, talk about uh, this. We'll do the numerator first. Square root of 2 minus 1 times the square root of 3 minus 1. So this is going to be the square root of 2 times the square root of 3. That's the square root of 6, okay? So if you don't, don't understand how to work with square roots, then you need to review, because if you're looking at this problem, you are obviously in the chapter section unit of um, studying square roots. So if you don't understand why square root of 2 times the square root of 3 is the square root of 6, you need to uh, review how to multiply square roots and radicals. I have tons of videos on all this in my pre-algebra and algebra playlist on my YouTube channel, or maybe you want to just check out my algebra course. All right, so now we have the square root of 2 minus 1, so that's going to be negative square root of 2, and then I, I go negative 1 times the square root of 3, so that's negative square root of 3, and then negative 1 times negative 1, is a positive one. Okay, so when I multiply these two together using the FOIL technique, this is the answer. So that's going to be my numerator. Now let's talk about the denominator. So that's going to be the square root of 3 plus 1 times the square root of 3 minus 1. And let's go ahead and use the FOIL technique here. 
Okay, so the square root of 3 times the square root of 3, that's the square root of 9. Square root of 3 times uh, negative 1, negative square root of 3. Positive 1 times square root of 3, positive square root of 3. And then we have a positive 1 times a negative 1, that's negative 1. Okay, but now here I have to clean this up, okay, because uh, we're not done. Let's go ahead and continue to work on the denominator. So I have negative uh, square root of 3 plus a positive square root of 3, so immediately these can cross cancel. Now, the whole reason why we're using this conjugate is I can take this square root of 9, and that the square root of 9 is going to be 3. Now, it's going to be positive or negative 3, but we'll you just use a positive 3 here, okay? So square root of 9, positive 3, minus 1, okay, is going to be 2. All right, so when we multiply this together, the answer is 2. When we multiply these together, this is the answer. So let's go ahead and now um, go ahead and actually substitute this stuff in. So when I use the conjugate, okay, when I multiplied uh, this, all right, let's just remember, I took this and multiplied by the conjugate. This is the equivalent answer, okay? This is what you want to write. So again, you want to be able to look at an answer like this and be like, ooh, this is not good. I have an irrational number in the denominator, so I'm going to have to multiply by the conjugate. In this case, I'm looking, oh, this is square root of 3 plus 1, so I'm going to have to multiply by square root of 3 minus 1, both in the denominator and square root of 3 minus 1 in the numerator. And when I do that, this was the result, okay, up here, and then this was the result down there, again, okay, in the denominator. Okay, so this would be for the numerator, and, and uh, this is how things turn out for the numerator, and this is how things turn out the denominator. Let's just look at the numerator real quick. You can see we have the square root of 6 minus square root of 2 minus uh, square root of 3 plus 1. There's, we can't simplify this. This is like combining like terms. So when you're dealing with the conjugate or rationalizing numbers, you need to know how to simplify radicals. Like, you know, if I have the square root of 80, you need to be able to simplify that. You need to know the operations with square roots and radicals, so that adding and subtracting, multiplying, dividing. You need to understand how to rationalize, and you need to understand the conjugate. Okay, so this is all the fundamental things that you need to uh, know as you are studying your square roots or radicals chapter in your algebra course. Very, very important stuff, and this is going to come up over and over and over again. And um, even on tests, like standardized tests, like the SAT, ACT, they're going to have square roots on there. And, you know, it's going to be like multiple choice, A, B, C, D. And I can tell you right now, their, their answers are not going to have like a radical uh, in the denominator. They're, it's going to be fully rationalized. So if you don't know how to rationalize, you won't be able to even identify the right answer. So this is like not like an optional little tiny detail. This is very, very important stuff. Okay, so hopefully this video was a good reminder of what to do, or maybe you just learned this for the first time. Either way, please consider smashing that like button. That definitely helps me out. And if you're new to my YouTube channel, hopefully you'll uh, consider subscribing. Uh, I've been on YouTube for 10 plus years, have over a thousand plus videos, basic to advanced mathematics. My goal, what I try to do is teach math in a clear and understandable way. I try to give you the explanations behind things. I could just teach you how to do a problem and show you, okay, here's a solution. But if you don't truly understand what's going on, then you're not going to remember why and what you, you should be doing. Okay, so I, that's what I always try to do. I always try to teach math uh, uh, to get students to master and really learn um you know, the material, because that's the only way you truly learn, okay? Just not by, you know, rote memorization or memorizing procedures. If you truly understand this stuff, then you're going to do just fine. All right, so um, again, hopefully you'll sit, consider subscribing. Please check out my playlist. I try to organize our playlist in various ways. So I have a pre-algebra, algebra, algebra geometry, uh, pre-calculus, that kind of thing. So whatever you might be looking for, hopefully my playlist uh, can kind of, you know, you could search things in there. But my best math help will be within my math help program. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.